Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Z. Today I will talk about the Mars event, the boxes for that event, and also one of the, well, the new tank in the boxes, the TL7. So let's get into it. Real quick, I'll cover the Mars event. Uh, I don't know too many details. I have actually not watched the video. Just quickly skimmed the article, but it looks like a decent mode. Uh, just in the sense that it is different. It kind of reminds me of the IS-8 balls event on the moon. Uh, the one thing I actually looked at that matters to me personally and probably to others is the uh, rewards in the progression. So there are experimental equipment. There are some bonds and some components. The components are really what I will be after along with the bonds and the credit boosters. So essentially, I will be participating. I think it's worth it just because of those couple rewards I pointed out. That's really all I looked at. I will most likely stream the event just a little bit. We will see exactly how much. But yeah, like I said, there are also boxes involved. One of those uh, items in the boxes is the TL7. So I'll quickly go over those stats in a second. Overall thoughts on more boxes. I am not a fan, but I can't do anything about it. So really that's about it. So far, boxes have always been reasonably worth value. If I spent my own money on this game, I would probably only put it into Christmas boxes. Boxes at other times of the year aren't as good value. They're still decent value. That's better than just spending on gold. But Christmas boxes are where it's at. Again, the incentive here is a new tank, TL7. Unless something changes, we should expect to see things like the Proto, Astron, T77, T44-100, TV4K-TTS, IS-3A, Buffers Tornvon, E75TS, and the KV-5. All of those tanks are decent. Some of those are better than others. If you have any of them, highly recommend buying them back if you have sold them. And then you have a higher chance of getting the ones you don't have. Of course, TL7 and Proto, the Tier 9 Chieftain variant, have a higher probability. But... Yeah, you want to rebuy anything, aka I need to because I've sold almost all of them. So let's get into the stats just a little bit. Tier 9, American Tank Destroyer, four crew members. I believe I was able to put a pretty standard crew in there. 10 degrees of gun depression, most of the way around, seven in the back. These are the field mods that I have selected. I can go both ways on this last one. Uh, the reverse speed at 16 with turbo is still kind of painful. So you could bump up the reverse speed to 20, which is actually solid. Uh, I was definitely suffering with it in the battle. I will be showing you in a second. And the camo, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure uh, how this tank will play overall. It's kind of average to say the least it can be quite mobile with turbo still only 19 power to weight though uh, dpm is quite low it is a four round auto loader 2.3 seconds in between shots so decently quick on the unload aim time and accuracy are kind of meh uh, the equipment i used i believe were optics vents and turbo this is one of those tanks where you can really play it however you want to, which is actually a good thing. It's nice when there isn't a meta way to do it. But yes, it is probably worth putting a turbo on just because of how slow it can feel without it. Now, the standard round is decent. 252 pen, 360 alpha, 1060 meters per second shell velocity. However, APCR, premium round, just better in every way. 315 uh, penetration and the shell velocity is so good 1492 which is up there with some of the best and it makes sniping so nice 
as we will see in the battle. Real quick on the armor, nothing really there. 100 millimeters upper plate, 80 millimeter lower plate. Turret, it will bounce lower tiers ish. The cupola, you won't bounce anything. And upper tiers will just go straight through you. If I switch to the APCR, everything's green. So don't expect to bounce anything. So yeah, let's uh let's get into the battle. So again, I only played one battle in this thing because I don't have too much time on my hands. It's a representative battle of the good and the bad of this thing. Here we are on highway. As we can already tell, the mobility is okay, not amazing. Also, that jumping back and forth, that was what I was seeing as well. My frames per second, for some reason, were kind of low at certain points in this game. Probably because I had so many tabs open or something. I don't know. So back to the boxes. I believe these will be similar to the St. Patrick's Day boxes and the Waffle Traeger boxes. Basically, oh, and Christmas boxes. I think it's if you have 50 on the 50th one, if you have not gotten a premium tank, you will get a premium tank. So in that sense, you're guaranteed to get one every 50 boxes. So if you don't have three of the premium tanks and making sure that you've repurchased all of them if you sold any, it will take 150 boxes. Is it the most enjoyable way to get them? Probably not, but it means that you're guaranteed to get them at some point. Now, for this tank, it is a premium tank, just like the Tier 9 Chieftain Proto, the Tier 9 WZ, I want to say like 114. And also the Char 75. There we can see the shell velocity, the aim time. Basically, bad aim time, so I missed the first shot. Shell velocity, I was able to sneak it in on that second shot. What I was doing there was just counting. So, kind of a typical tank destroyer auto loader. I don't really have too much more to say than that. It's it's got a reasonable reload. It's like 35 or 40 seconds depending on your loadout. With the gun depression, you can play ridge lines. It has the mobility to relocate if needed. Reverse speed can be a little bit painful. Other than that, there isn't much else to say. Just one more tank that's being added. I know there's probably one of the most unopinionated videos I've had in a while, but for some reason, this tank just has me in a very, I don't know, state. Anyways, another clip down. I think I only did two shots of damage with a full clip. Not fantastic, not terrible. My team is doing quite badly. We're down four tanks already. We are losing the city. We have one tank in the field, which not going to do very much, but luckily it's still an angle 
And that's what's more important. Not doing a very good job of getting shots that I want right there, but not the end of the world. Now we're down five tanks. HP, we're down 5,000, give or take. the first time in history a youtuber has to go grab pizza out of the oven in the middle of a video anyways we are cleaning up the city just a little bit our heavy tanks have been doing work i guess i'm spotting on the sta2 which is nice, and now that I'm almost loaded, I should be able to just pick the STA-2 up real quick. One shot, two shot, as we can see, solid auto loader. There we can see the shell velocity again, quite a snapshot, most of your shots won't hit like that. Here we will see the relocating ability of this thing again. I haven't really moved all that much, but I wouldn't be moving this much if I was in a slower tank. Kind of cruising, 55. About all it can do. I really have gone back and forth whether I want the extra camo or the extra reverse speed. I think I would go extra reverse speed purely because it gives you the option of just playing on more maps. The camo, it's not amazing all anyways, so there's no reason to overdo it. And this doesn't really seem to play like a tank that requ uh, requires camo. Kind of show up behind or next to people and then clip out and then run away. The tank that this thing reminds me most of is probably that tier 8 British tank destroyer all loader, the GSOR, uh, I believe it's 1008. Uh, because, well, four round auto loading tank destroyer. I think the GSOR is a little more mobile and it doesn't have the cupola, so it's a little more enjoyable to play. Also, the GSOR is. Game time and accuracy is so much better. Like, I would much rather play that than this. The only benefit of this is it has higher alpha and it has uh, higher HP. That's really about it. I will most likely stream a couple more battles in this tank at some point over the weekend. Uh, I will be streaming some marking as well. Just let me know in the chat if you guys want me to uh, switch over to streaming the TL7 and I can do so. I probably won't just randomly go play it. And like I said, I'll probably also play the Mars mode. And I will also be playing a little bit of Onslaught, just getting the weekly missions done, but that might not be on stream. Anyways, we're up to 4,000 damage, 5 kills, pulling this back slowly. We're only down one tank now. 
hardest part of this has definitely been timing the reloads. It hasn't been too bad though, which it could be a lot worse. The 2.3 seconds in between shots actually feels pretty good. It's not amazing. I probably should have aimed that shot in a lot more, but I was expecting to take a big hit and then get hit by artillery. Good news is I pick up that kill. I have Boresk for support and I'm up to 4,700 damage, 1,000 assists, and 7 kills. All I'm doing right here is moving closer to the E75 because I see that the Boresk is going around and Boresk picks up the E75 which means that only the artillery is left and I can tell you now that I do not get to the artillery in time. So we'll switch over to the post game stats. Top gun, high caliber, ace tanker, which this is a low damage tier nine ace tanker, but I did get seven kills, but it was against tier eights. So I'm not entirely sure what that means. It was a lot of experience though, 1468. For a tank destroyer, that's a lot. On the credit side of things, it's okay. This is what's crazy though. The ammunition is really expensive. So, if you're trying to make credits, don't fire premium rounds. That's really all I can say. Is it worth picking this thing up? That is up to you. If you are a collector, probably. It's the first American auto-loading tank destroyer. It is also a tier 9 premium, and it's an auto-loader. But it is nothing special. It's not going to overpower other tanks. It has a long reload. Aim time is kind of so-so. Accuracy is also just kind of meh. Quick potential, solid. What I'm trying to say here is it's not really worth it if you don't want to spend money on this game. It's not something like the BZ-176 where everything else is just bad compared to it. I think that's really all I have to say. If you like this video or didn't, leave something in the comments and Feel free to follow me on Twitch since I am actually streaming again. And all, all of my stuff, of course, is also in my Discord. Anyways, I will see you guys around.